Welcome back. Good to see you. Uh, hanging out at a secret location uh, across the causeway in the East End. Paul Langlois Band. Is this going to be an ongoing thing, or is it because of a benefit which we'll talk about, or is it because restrictions are lifting, you can do this and get out there and start playing again? No, it's not because of any of that. Um, yes, it will be a one-time thing. I'll never do this again. <laughs> well, it's, uh, you know what? I just I got a call um, and got offered this gig in Niagara Falls, the closing ceremonies of the Canada Games. I know that 60% of Olympic, Canadian Olympic athletes have participated in the Canada Games. Okay. So I'm into that. And uh, they're doing the closing ceremonies, and then it's supposed to turn into a party. So we're, I, I accepted the offer, and I wanted to get a band together. And certainly, Greg, um, you know, we play in other outfits, one called the Campfire Liars Club. And um, also Joe Carscallon is hiding over there. Um, so I started with those two and um, then grabbed a couple other sloughs. And, um, yeah, it was... And now we've been rehearsing, and um, it's fun. So the Merchant gig on the 19th of August for the Care Hub came out of just the desire to do a warm-up show before, you know, just so we're kind of, you know, feeling pretty good. Uh, benefit. Why this particular cause to support the Integrated Care Hub? Well, you know what? I would say uh, Joanne, my wife, who is, um, you know, some people you know her and, and um, a lot of people in town know her to be sort of, a, she has charity element, event planner, that kind of thing. And she a huge heart. A yeah. huge heart. Yeah. yeah. And it was her idea. She did it like that. Um, she's already been um, involved in the care hub. And, you know, it's kind of a hot button issue in Kingston. The homelessness thing, it's, it's uh, on Lower Union Street, there's a place a couple doors down that is now um, an indigenous uh, based um, home for people, 19 rooms. It used to be an addiction center, and so it does good work, but it's such an uphill battle for everyone in town, for council, for um, you know, the, the mayor, Brian Patterson, like just, it's, it's a problem that needs to be addressed and solved. And so this particular gig is going to raise, already has raised money because other people have donated, um, just for kind of a locker program because they're keeping their stuff in garbage cans, you know, like, and, and it's, it's just not dignity. Yeah, it's, it's not, uh, exactly. It's not, it's not good. It's not human. So, um, you know, the reaction so far, because we're doing it um, for the Care Hub, has been really positive because it's like, okay, excellent. Someone's doing something, and there's, I know there's a lot of people doing things, but it's just a, an issue that's close to our heart, and, uh, but I would totally credit Joanne for all of it. What I love about it, too, is it gets people talking. It gets people yeah. talking about the locker situation, about dignity, and about, you know, the fact that they are homeless doesn't necessarily make them not human. Yeah, it's tough go. And then, you know, right now it's summer. Okay, so I could sleep outside in the summer. But, you know, it starts to get cold. And, okay, what are you doing? And y you don't necessarily want to be staying in, like, a detox center or a warming center or yeah. uh, that kind of thing. So, that you know, they all have their own minds and uh, decisions. And um, so anything we can do to think of how to solve the problem. It's, it's uh, you know, a couple of people from the city have said, you know, it's our biggest problem to solve and, or to try and solve. And so we're, we're happy to, you know, do a small thing. For them. <laughs> Why wouldn't you extend this further then? Maybe down the road. I, I would prefer to have a new record if I were going to sort of tour. And I probably will as I get pissed off when the winter starts coming. Mm. I need like three more songs. Okay. And um, I usually write better when the winter's coming. And um, so hopefully I will record and I would certainly go to these guys if um, I manage to get a record out in the spring or something. <laughs>
Welcome back. I'm your buddy Bill. So good to see you. This is Global News Morning and now this is part two of our interview with Paul Langwa while rehearsing for two shows coming up. The Kingston Integrated Care Hub Benefit and the closing of the Canada Games in Niagara Falls. We also talked about future solo albums from Paul and the HIP's 40 year anniversary in 2024 when Gord Downey's brother Mike releases a doc series on the Tragically HIP. Here's part two of our interview with Paul Langwa. <laughs> Noticed Paul's confidence level higher and higher and his craftsmanship increase. Don't stop. <laughs> Just step off. Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. I'm, uh, I'm right, thinking. Right there, especially, like I could tell that I was going to either get a shot or something. From Fix This Head to Not Guilty to the Campfires to this incarnation of a Paul Langlois band. I've always found Paul extremely confident in all of the. Uh, all the things he does, he has a lot of uh, street cred, so to speak. It, it's Paul Langlois, right? It feels pretty easy. It's a, it's a good chemistry already, and it, it, it feels awesome. Feels good to you? Yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, I, uh, we got Matt Mulvihill, who's a buddy of mine on bass, and um, excellent firefighter. He says he's the best in town. <laughs> maybe he is, maybe he isn't. And uh, a guy named Bill Anglin on drums who hits it hard, and... Um, also, Joe Carscallon, who's hiding over there. And we're all into it. And the gig is until like the 19th and the 21st of August. So we're still, we got time and everyone's feeling like, okay, yeah, that, that song didn't go that great. Let's try it again next week kind of thing. So we're, we're planning on rehearsing and, yeah. and we're planning on being tight. We want to be tight. We're going to be tight. Uh, Malva Hill is, uh, I believe he's October in the uh, Kingston uh, Fireman's uh, calendar. And you can see it when you're playing. There's not just that chemistry, but a camaraderie you know, with this particular band. And that's so important. It's the way bands have to be. I mean, I was lucky enough um, to be in a band, another band. Mm -hmm. And um, it was all about how we got along. And, you know, you laugh if the other guy makes a mistake. It's the best thing ever, you know, just kind of like, oh, I'm going to nail him with that one <laughs> after. And, um, yeah, bands should be, you got to be buddies for, for it really to really click, I think. Anyway, so that's, that's how I like a it. A family, family dynamic. We're like weird cousins or something. Yeah. Are we close to a Paul Langlois solo number three? You said you have some songs written. Yeah, I mean, I have eight songs that I'm happy with, that I believe. You know, no one really buys records anymore, but I, I am still, I am still committed. Yeah, I'm still committed to the album. Um, so I'm hoping to write three more and um, get them recorded at some point in the next year. The doc, 2024, uh, Mike Downey uh, helming it. Um, he says there's going to be a lot of things the band hasn't even seen or heard, which surprises me because most hip fans think that they've seen everything. They have everything. Apparently right. not. I think Mike is digging pretty deep. Thank goodness we all know him very well. Thank goodness we're all listed as producers. So, again, one more thank goodness that we can actually watch it before he delivers it to Amazon to say, there's no way you're putting that in. No way, he's digging really deep. The interviews are highly stressful, <laughs> but he's great. You know, he just wants to know everything and he's digging deep with footage, yes, that I'm sure we've never seen before. And so, you know, it's a daunt. I wouldn't want to be him, but he thinks about it 24 seven. He's got, you know, probably a year and a half before he has to deliver it. Um, but to be him, I just couldn't even, conceive of, you know, because it's four at least hour-long episodes. The hit from the beginning to the end is just like, wow. Uh, but he's up for it. I talk to him often, and, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. You know, we're, we're, uh, I think he's going to do a great job, but um, we really don't know what's coming. We, we've already, I've already done eight hours of interviews, you know, so it's, but, uh, yeah, he's got some uh, secret footage that, um, I doubt we've seen. <laughs> At the screening, you're going to be like, I didn't yeah. give approval for this. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll see. 
Um, he knows it. I've already said you can't. I th that I regret that story that I in our first interview. So um, that can't be in there, right? <laughs> right, Mike? And he's like, Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's cool. I'm like, okay, for sure. Okay. So anyway, we love him. He's like our brother. So he'll do a great job, I'm sure. Yeah, it's gonna be a great way to commemorate the anniversary. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's like why not? Um, this is what we're kind of left with, you know, and, and um, so everyone gets up to their own sort of musical things, and, but we can't turn our back on how great we had it and how great it went, and um, so it's nice to have things like this happen. <laughs>